And like even this year, this quarter, we have everybody like getting into studios on a regular basis. It's easy to like get too busy and that stuff dwindle, but it's so important for this type of brand and product to make sure everybody is out there like listening and hearing. Welcome back to the Fit Insider Podcast. I'm your host, Joe Veneri. Today, I'm joined by Dave Long, co-founder and CEO of Orange Theory Fitness. In this episode, we discuss the company's tech-driven approach to interval training. Dave talks about the rebound of in-person fitness and getting back into growth mode. Plus, we explore the potential for more healthcare companies to pay for fitness classes. Let's get into it. The Fit Insider Podcast is brought to you by Jack Taylor, our exclusive PR partner. More than just PR, they're creative storytellers and brand builders who actually understand the health and wellness industry. To learn more, head to jacktaylorpr.com slash fit. That's F-I-T-T. Hi, Dave. Welcome to Fit Insider. Thanks for joining us. Hey, Joe. It's great to be here. Yeah, looking forward to today's conversation. I think yourself and Orange Theory Fitness, those are names that people will certainly recognize in our audience and across the fitness industry. I don't know that we need kind of a full introduction to the brand and what you're working on, but Maybe just to get the conversation started, where does things stand today? If there was a, a state of the union at Orange Theory and how you're kind of looking at things, kind of top line news or, or developments, uh, what's on your mind and how is everything kind of going? Yeah, no, and obviously it's been an interesting three years, you know, but we're in a, we're excited about the place that we're in. I think super fortunate we've had um, amazing members throughout and amazing franchise partners, right, to, to work through the last three years. We've added a bunch of studios, new studios as well, um, which is maybe maybe rare case, you know, given the state of you know, the last few years. I think we're excited. Our our customers, our members that are been with us or are new to us, I think we've grown member base since 21 by about 56%. They love the brand as much, maybe even more than ever before. Maybe some people appreciate it even more than back 2020, 2019 days. Our kind of march forward is how do we continue to reach more people through more studios, both in the U.S., through a number of key international markets, and how do we continue on our journey of providing just really good results for our members, a community they can count on and trust. And then, you know, innovation has always been in our blood. So how are we going to continue to move the product forward and kind of be a holistic solution for our members? How do we help them on our on their journey? Not necessarily by giving them everything, but how do we give them insights and feedback and ways to improve all kind of all facets of their life, which obviously there's a core of the time that they spend with us. Most of the time they're not with us. So what, what can we do for them outside of that? Yeah. And just, you know, at a high level, you mentioned tech driven, innovative, interval based boutique studio, You're kind of at the forefront as the boutique boom started to evolve. You all were certainly there expanding, kind of leading the way COVID happens across the industry, brick and mortar operators are dealing with that. You mentioned, you know, having opened some studios during that time. Do you, how do you measure it in terms of locations? Is it franchises sold, franchises open? What's the the current number right now? We really look at, you know, franchisees that have open studios. We, we've been kind of with the same group of franchisees for the most part, even from back to 2019 to today, it's really franchisees deciding to open more. And so, you know, we're at, I think, almost 1,550 locations internationally. Uh, A little over 200 of those are outside the U.S., so over 1,300 U.S. locations. Both of those numbers have grown in total by about 200 since like March of 2020. So not nearly the growth that we saw 17, 18, 19, but we were still adding, you know, quite a bit of new stores even through all this craziness. And then as we kind of think about 23, we're already starting to pick up that pace of, of new openings really charting more towards 100 this year. And then we think 24 is going to be starting to feel like kind of the good old days of a lot of growth, not just in the US, but you know, a number of, of markets outside the US that we're super pumped about. Yeah, as you think about maybe getting back to that growth, whether it's the back half of this year going into next year, is there a top end, like an upper limit you have in mind in terms of a goal or you look at from either a saturation standpoint or an opportunity standpoint, we want to open X number of locations in the US or internationally? You know, we, we have kind of a, a BHAG of, get, of getting to 5,000 globally. And obviously you have to get to uh, 2,000 first. You know, given that the last three years, we probably would have already been at 2,000 global locations. So really it's it's charting. What are the next group of fantastic areas that need an orange theory? And how does that line up with the right franchise partner that wants to do it? 
And so that's really what, what drives it. How are we doing that type of, of pairing approach? And then we really benefit from the fact that as more locations open, it actually increases brand awareness. More people know about it. And that was part of the magic of 2016 to 2020 is so many new studios were opening. That's was the, what people were talking about and loving it. So it's really, it's, it's capturing that again. We know that like the affinity for the product, for our coaches, again, is probably better than ever. It's just, it's can, building up that momentum and that buzz again of just a lot of new activity. Yeah. Let's maybe circle back to that buzz with saying, you know, we alluded to it in terms of the pandemic, obviously everybody knows what happened and the impact it had on really any in-person business, but in particular fitness studios and gyms, there was a the shutdown, right? We, we navigate that, that kind of world. And now thinking about when that transition happened, getting back to business, can you talk about either how you conveyed that to the team, to the franchise, to the franchisees and to the broader kind of member base in terms of the demand maybe in them coming back, the interest in them wanting to open new studios and just what you experienced. Because I still think, you know, from the outside looking in, there's the back and forth of, oh, the fitness industry in person was never going to be the same. We're not going back to studios in kind of the same way. It's going to be at home or hybrid or some combination. At the same time, you have kind of prominent studio brands, gym operators saying, Hey, it's, we're back. We're getting back to business in the sense that, like you said, back in 2017, 2018. So what was that maybe firsthand experience like, and how do you then use that momentum to get to the point where we're talking about, Hey, we want to get back to those growth numbers. You know, it was certainly a, a continuum depending on the period of time, very variable depending on the market, even with, you know, obviously within the U S even within States of the U S and I think there was a firm belief always that we were going to get back to business and that just because we knew so much about what the product meant to our members, what the results meant to them and how we just knew at the core that they just can't recreate that and they actually don't want to re recreate that in their basement or their home equipment or anywhere else. So I think it was that that was the North Star. And I think the frustration was around, well, it's just in a lot of areas, it took a lot longer than anybody had hoped. And when, you, when we thought about, let's make sure we put the member first, how do we support the franchisees to make it through tough times that, you know, depending on how they could last longer in different areas and kept the, those like lines of communication really open and really close with franchisees. And then with the members, like we spent a lot of time understanding how do we communicate with them? How do we make sure they never feel pressured when studios reopen? So there was never, a, okay, we're reopened in this town. You we were just activating our membership. It was always a voluntary type of approach, which I think went a long way. I don't think anybody would appreciate it just being forced because within any given studio, you had members that had very different feelings about their comfort level. Even today, there's still a percentage of people that don't feel as comfortable in crowded places and we, and we have to respect that. So I think having that alignment and making sure that that, that proliferated through the franchisees, their studio staff, giving, always giving tools either at home or digitally through this whole journey. We still have an Orange Theory Live platform that that people still love. Most people, when the studio opens, they go right back to it. But there are people that are actually taking our workouts or a different flavor of product that we offer through a virtual platform like this. So it was being on, the, on that journey and being real about it, which I think was really helpful because I think everybody involved appreciated that we were listening and understanding that there's just no one size fits all approach. You know, you had a market like Canada that some of those studios shut down and reopened five or six times. And so... That consumer, that franchisee had a different, a totally different life cycle on this and others. But I think that really helped us drive through. And then always talking about the wins, you know, when we would reopen studios, we'd get a flock of really excited members coming back right away and creating the energy. And then slowly as people got comfortable, it just, just continued to build. That was like a microcosm that happened at every studio. It just kept building and building. And as you can imagine, then you have this momentum effect where, the coaches are getting more excited and people are feeling more confident that this is really back. You know, it's still the world's still in some ways different than it was, but people being together, wanting to be together, even suffering together with workouts, right? But the real community that happens, that I think we just support and then it happens, you know, in each studio on its own really drove this through, which just can't be created without this kind of studio environment. Yeah, there's a lot of really great insights there and talking about just how different it is for different people in different studios, different places, and maybe not pushing them to do something that they they weren't ready to do or weren't comfortable with. I think one of the things that's unique about you is that if you fall on social media, like you're in the studios, I don't know how often, but it seems like pretty much constantly. Was that a 
a decision from like a leadership standpoint? Is that your personal interest? I'm sure there's some overlap of both, but how do you think about like getting out into the studios and experiencing it firsthand and having this, you know, you have the knowledge of what the customer and the, the franchisee is, is, is feeling. For me personally, whether it's 2019 or today, that was the best part of my role. Being out in the studio, like it creates energy for me, Talk, taking the work on obviously talking to the coaches, talking to the members, people just being excited just to share their stories. Like it's just rare that you go do that. It's always uplifting. Like people want to be there and they want to talk about it. And even like some like, you know, just tear jerking stories of people that couldn't when studios were closed, say in California for a year, like people were torn apart that they needed that as part of their life. And like listening to them talk about, okay, now, now I can come back into the studio. And it's so much more than just coming in to work out. I would say there, there were periods of time where our headquarter team was just so busy on initiatives and making sure we were providing the tools. We have a, we have a studio here that you know our staff uses, but we want them all out in the studios in the field as well. I think there were times where we weren't doing it enough. And like even this year, this quarter, we have everybody like getting in the studios on a regular basis. We have like our like leadership team doing franchisee roundtables. So they're meeting with franchisees in different markets, going to the studios, talking to the members. It's easy to like get too busy and that stuff dwindle, but it's it's so important for this type of brand and product to make sure everybody is out there like listening and hearing. And like I said, for most people, then it's it's motivating and inspiring for them. It's not they're not out there getting beat up. They're out there getting inspired that people just love, you know, what we're doing at the store level. Yeah, there's there's such a conversation about community and how it's important. And it's one thing to to talk about it. And obviously the different studios and modalities, they all facilitate it in some way. Then it's another thing for that kind of HQ staff that's a little bit more removed from it to be out there and experiencing it. So yeah, I think it, it goes a long way, both for the individuals who are doing it, but also the people on the ground who are operating the studios, the coaches, the members, and all those things. Thinking about, you mentioned having that buzz, the buzz kind of fuels momentum, momentum fuels growth. From that kind of franchisee standpoint, think about accelerating maybe new studio openings or getting other folks in, in territories on board. What is it at the HQ level that you're kind of thinking about? Obviously, continuing to push from like the innovation and tech standpoint, what's possible on that front, marketing, retention, giving them those tools. What is the, the kind of team doing there to, to kind of say, hey, this is the what we're working on to continue to accelerate your success when you're going out there and opening these studios? I think it's a whole bunch of things. I think one is we really re-engage with, you know, brand awareness marketing in 23 that we hadn't really done because we were just focused on more traditional kind of middle funnel. So kicking this year off, we went on a real arm and arm journey with our franchisees saying, let us like, let us combine forces, be able to spend the right dollars on brand awareness. As much as I live Orange Theory and our, our network, there, most people still don't really know exactly what it is. And so there's still a huge opportunity just to, to reignite that. And as I mentioned, we don't have as many new studios opening. There's not as much, not as many conversations going, even though on social and our channels, when we're doing our challenges and our transformation challenges and all those things, those are big buzz points. There's not a bunch of, okay, there's, you know, we had a month where we opened 47 new locations in, uh, it's actually December, 2019. Every day you're opening one and a half locations and you can imagine just the amount of buzz that creates. Now we're thinking of what's the content and the things that we want to talk about, the conversations we want to have. The members, our community, love our coaches. How are we having them even more active? And some of it is even back to how we started the brand being grassroots of we're out at every charity event, every 5K and talking about Orange Theory and just educating people. The kind of the COVID years made that more challenging to do. And I think we lost a bit of that muscle. Of, hey, this is still part of the business that we need to do. So this year, you're going to see us a lot more active in communities. And it also aligns with we, we have a community within the studio and we need to like pour that out into the, the actual physical local community. So that's a big initiative that we have. And then continuing to give the best training support and toolkit for our coaches. This is like this is the hardest job in fitness, what our coaches do. It's, it's insane how difficult it is to effectively lead that class, inspire the members, correct form, push people to go a little faster, pull other people back because they need to maybe take a rest. All those things are happening really fast. And so we really double down the resources and focus on making sure that the coaches had that backdrop of the best support, both from, from us, franchisees, even the, the, the new learning management system we've launched for them, the way that they want to learn that's convenient for them. It's culminating this year at, at our, our franchise convention is just over the top massive energy fun, massive 300 person orange theory workout but we want to like double or triple the amount of coaches that attend that we usually get about a thousand and we'd like to get 
50% or 100% more because that in-person contact, again, that's kind of recreates what happens in the studio every day. So a lot of what we're doing this year culminates that towards the end of this year and then just bleeds into 24 of, of even the next evolution of, of excitement, growth, and innovation. Hey, everyone. We'll get back to the show in just a second. But first, I wanted to tell you about our exclusive PR partner, Jack Taylor. Honestly, this one's a no-brainer. We've known the Jack Taylor team for years. They work with some of the most innovative health and wellness companies. We're talking Whoop, Athletic Greens, Hyper Ice, and many more. Jack Taylor has an extensive industry network, knows how to work with high-growth companies, and really invests in building long-term relationships. I know this firsthand because they're Fit Insider's PR agency, so I can confidently recommend them, and I do all the time. From startups to more established brands, they go beyond pushing product to help companies truly thrive. To learn more, head to jacktaylorpr.com slash fit. That's F-I-T-T. Now back to the show. Yeah, you, so much of what you're, you're talking about, even if it's indirectly, comes back to this community, community within the organization, community among coaches, community actually in the community um, yeah. and kind of like this grassroots level. I think it's such an interesting conversation because it is kind of intangible to some extent. You, you, everybody kind of talks about building it. It's almost like building brand. Well, what does that mean? And at the same time within fitness, like there's no other way to do it except for to go out there and do the work, basically shake hands, set up tables, hand out information, talk yeah. about it. In part where we saw during COVID with the shift to kind of at home, there's this, oh, well, now the workouts can be done at home, the equipment, whether it's the technology. And oh, by the way, we're going to build community. There's a community now that's, there's, you know, basically no limit to it. It's people all over the world. Anybody that's interested in this particular thing or bought this product, how do you think about the kind of shift or maybe to what extent there was a shift to at-home workouts, hybrid workouts, people now thinking about balancing their routines? And is there kind of a coming out of the pandemic, something you can point to and say, yeah, it has changed in terms of how we think about the fitness industry, or is it, this was a, a moment in time and now it's, it's a matter of time until we get back to what it was before. When I think about the, the good of what's happened around just a, a more digital, more offerings, more ways for people to try fitness, experience it. Intimidation is still the biggest factor of people coming to our studio, joining a gym or they join and they don't actually go like the story you hear a million times. So when, when I think of, people just starting to start just thinking about exercising, how do they find solutions? I, I don't ever think, and I think that's, we're kind of a, just fans of fitness and, move, and moving in general, because people need a lot more of it, as you know, like we're just not, people are not getting enough exercise period in the US globally. So people just dabbling in a workout on YouTube or a digital fitness program is better than not. And it usually leads to other things. Maybe they end up joining a gym, you know, we kind of see this more macro cycle of a lot of people join a gym, they're still not getting the results. Do they go the personal training route? Do they try to follow an online routine? And then like our niche is, well, you just show up at Orange Theory and the coach and the programming. And then it's going to be, it's going to be challenging, but you just show up. You don't need to think about it a second before or after. And then you tap into this global community that if you want to go deep, they're talking about the workout every day on Reddit. They're on social media. They're talking about the challenges. They're talking about their success stories. So I do think this kind of proliferation of more things being out there, fitness and more conversations should only be good for it. But I think it's like a longer, it's a longer game. It's not like, okay, now everybody's got access to all these things on their phone or, or whatever. And now they're just, everybody's hitting their goals and happy. I think it's, it's just another step in the evolution of it. And I do think, and we even plan this arena in that, okay, you work out at Orange 33 days a week, you need some sort of recovery. Maybe you need some zone two cardio. Maybe you need supplemental strength, mobility. We provide some of that through our mobile app just as part of being a member. Or, you know, you're going to an, another facility or you're doing something else outside it. If you're a runner or you want to get into running, there's paths there. So I think when you think about it holistically, it should all build on each other. I don't, we, we don't have a challenge where people are working out seven days a week and we need to pull them back. We need to, <laughs> we need to push people forward in the world to move. As we're even reimagining, like, how do we, how do we talk about this whole process. Like we do a bunch of work with the American Heart Association and that's just getting people to take like 5,000 steps a day to start and educating them on why this is so important for their heart health long-term. When we think about, you know, where we're going to go in the future, how do we activate challenges and things? Orange Theory being the brand to talk about it, but it's not necessarily coming to take our workout. It's like, what can we do to activate a global challenge or a national challenge to just go 
take a step forward. So that's the, that's kind of the ways that we're thinking. If we want to be obviously still getting the Orange Theory name out, but how are we doing something that's getting people moving um, in a more holistic way? Yeah, I think that's interesting and also super important. It, it was it was always confusing to me why it was this conversation about like one or the other or this one's going to win or how it's like. Hey, look, at the, at the end of the day, like nobody is doing enough in terms of movement, exercise, increasing access, helping people change their goals. So like anything that we do is better than nothing. So yeah, I'm kind of also in the camp of, yeah, it'd be great. I'm sure the way that you guys think about it, come to Orange Theory. But if you're out there and you're walking, if you're moving, if you're living a healthier lifestyle, that's what we want to do. So that's a step in the right direction. Thinking about that as it relates to like the broader landscape of fitness studios. Obviously, over time, we've seen different modalities kind of ebb and flow, some kind of maybe fall off and then come back. As it relates to Orange Theory, obviously, you have the the interval training, the high intensity interval training kind of dialed in. Do you think about, hey, we have to have other modalities, we want to innovate with other concepts and where that fits into it? Or is it just a matter of doing what you're kind of best at and, and sticking to that and kind of growing the brand? You know, I think the, the core of what we're going to continue to focus on is still the core workout offering. You know, when you think about if somebody's really trying to get to their best health, it's hard without the, the, the four, zone four or five hitting the intervals. Like there's just so many benefits that we could talk about for an hour about that. It's yeah. hard for people to do on their own. And then, you know, the power that's generated from the rowing portion of our workout. And then obviously the strength and functional training on the floor is super important. And then there's a little bit of steady state cardio in our workout. Not a lot. You know, ideally, somebody does some steady state zone two cardio outside of Orange Theory. But when you, when you put that all together, if somebody's going to give us two hours or three hours a week, this is the best two or three hours they should spend. But if, there's, if they're thinking about it more holistically, then zone two cardio, additional strength. We, you know, we intentionally launched, the, you know, strength classes during the pandemic for a number of different reasons. We, we definitely had a feel that people will, well, I mean, first off, our customers were telling us they would love to have a strength class. Challenge was always, well, all our classes are full. Where do we put it? Do you want to come at, you know, 8 at 8 p.m. or 2 p.m.? Probably not. So, but, but, at, you know, the pandemic gave us an ability to trial a lot of things that we hadn't done before. One being this lift 45 class that's, that's super popular. And so I think as we go into the, in the, into the future, I think strength will be a bigger focus. One, just educating members on if you're more focused on strength, start on the strength floor, focus on the weights. The coach is going to push you there. Some days are not always about maximal splat points. And as we think about our personalization in the future, it's going to help guide a member for that. And then is, if there's ancillary things they need to do or foundational things, how do we give that to them via digital through our app or just another channel? So I think that that's an area that's definitely not going away and that we're going to definitely focus on. And then, I, then it's just back to them talking about like giving you a holistic plan. So Orange Theory, three days a week, get that Lift 45 class the fourth day and then get a day of like, 40 minutes of zone two cardio, whatever you bike, walk, run, whatever it is, do a couple recovery, 15 minute recovery sessions. We here's some that we have, or if you're into yoga, if you're into Pilates, go, go do that. It's being able to have that personalized conversation, you know, with millions of people that are they all going to end up exercising six days a week? Probably not, but at least they know what the optimal plan is. And then they fit in what they can fit in. And they, these are the, these are the priorities. If you're only going to do two days a week, start with these two things. I think that's what, long-term will help people understand it's not like okay now i'm going to go do strength training six days a week and not do intervals and not do cardio because that's not the solution either it's a balance if that makes sense yeah for sure is it you know for you personally you're dialed into what's happening across the the kind of broader fitness and wellness sure. space is it a challenge to not get maybe distracted or start to look at and say oh you know this whether it's recovery or Pilates or you name the modality cycling, like, oh, we should have something down that path. There is just saying back to the, your point, which is like for most people, this is the best thing that they can do. We've already kind of nailed that. So let's focus on what we're good at. Do you kind of find yourself being pulled in this direction of like, oh, we could offer a suite of these things, a portfolio, different brands, or, you know, just bringing it back to the kind of bread and butter. I mean, there's a natural talk track of, well, should we have a second brand that's complimentary? You know, it's a, kind of an obvious thing you could come to. You have franchisees, maybe they want a second brand. You can find something complimentary. I think the reason that just keeps drawing us back to the core is that there's still so much that we still want to do to improve the core product. Like if we could look in the mirror and say, we're like 98% of the way there, we're going to like 
inch towards a hundred. But I, you know, my personal opinion is we're like 50, 60% of the way, way there, the things that we're going to be able to do in the next couple of years to personalize the experience, to drive more results. And they're really going to show members, okay, you're rowing better. You were a walker. Now you're jogging, you're running. You completed these challenges in this time. And we're sharing those improvements in aggregate and through their mobile app, but we're not telling the full story about what that means for cardiovascular health long-term. And we do tie it to, okay, like you're coming in to, to train, to have a better life, to do things better, to feel better, to have more energy, to be able to do particular things outside, whether it be with your kids, grandkids, whatever. There's a lot to still for us to do there that keeps us really excited and busy. It's like a balance of innovation and also you have to generate people to come in and try it and yeah. innovation usually drives retention it's also a balance of how much new operational lift a franchisee can right. take on in a given period of time so we went through a period where we launched a lot of things like 17 18 and some of them worked and some of them different so now i think we're more balanced of we have a three-year roadmap it's incredible if we deliver half of it but we also there are limiters of you know, what are the right times for the financial implications that may be for a franchisee? What are the right times for just implementing a new operational thing? And I think, you know, the 13 years or so we've been at this has given us a good uh, cadence of, of knowing where our guardrails are. We'll take some big bets soon and do some big, exciting things, but we'll, we'll have a lot of data behind that. It's going to add value to the member, give them results, help the franchisee. So that, that ends up being our North star. There's not like, oh, let's do another thing that, that, is more important than what I'm just talking about. So that, that helps that we don't get distracted because there's just so much to do. Yeah, I think it's really well said and important for other operators who are listening to you talk and hearing this, like it is very easy to get distracted. And ultimately what you're saying is, and it's kind of proven by the, the track record and kind of a steady hand through the pandemic, being able to grow, being able to emerge on the other side is like, hey, we, we know what we're working on. We have the roadmap. Sure, there are other things that we'll pursue and be opportunistic about, but this is the goal. We have to stay the course. And, you know, I, I think the kind of results will speak for itself. And I, I think it certainly demonstrated that to this point. One of the things I did want to follow up on at the onset, and you kind of mentioned, hey, they're only here for the members X number of hours or workouts a week. How do we engage with them outside of the studio, contribute to them living that healthy, healthy lifestyle? Obviously, the app potentially is one of those avenues. But when you start to think about it, it's are we doing some type of, you mentioned challenges as another one, but from apparel to supplements to everything down every path of health and wellness to technology, are there things in terms of engaging them outside of the studio that you're, you're, you're able to talk about at this point, or is it all kind of coming soon? How do you think about, you know, forging that relationship beyond when they're in the, the four walls of the studio? Yeah. Well, I, I think, you know, the, the kind of the main pillar is this personalization piece. How do we put tools in place? through empowering the coaches, through the mobile app, so that a member existing or coming in can more specifically set goals. Like, what are they really trying to get after? And maybe they don't know the first day, but they're a month in, two months in, they're like, but this is really where I want to go. And creating an ecosystem in which they can do that, we can give them very specific feedback. So that, that's kind of one track. And then like the experiential side, in the workout itself, not that we're going to wholesale change the components, but there's some pretty excited things we're going to do with the way we can measure and connect all aspects of the workout, which again, ties into the personalization and how they can, we can measure and monitor and help them understand what they're doing. We're going to do some, some exciting things with music this year. We had a really fun year with Steve Aoki last year with those workouts and members loved it, but for every day and for every challenge, how do we take the music to the next level? It's a super important part of the programming. So that's a, that's a project that will land this year. And with kind of supplements and, and things like that, we've been very conservative. And, and set really high standards to kind of do no harm first. Our members really have a high level of trust in this. And if we start recommending a million different things, that could erode. And, and not everything is for everybody. So we've been exploring, you know, some various partnerships. Some might come to light this year, but there's a, just a foundation that's got to be something that we can stand behind. We have a, a very deep uh, medical and fitness advisory board. So it has, everything has to make through their rigors, which typically slows everything down, which is usually for the best. Um, and then when we think about how do we engage members outside the studio, some more, more challenging things that, that add out outside the four walls of the studio. Some of that will just be through activating more things like recovery routines and things for, for people to prep and recover from these workouts, which are intense, right? And then there's the whole cycle of recovery is just as important uh, as the workout itself. 
And it's not necessarily going to another store and doing things. A lot of it is can be done pretty simply. So that's an area we're going to double down on as well. Yeah, a lot of exciting things, kind of teasing what to look forward to. We'll certainly keep tabs on it uh, when the time comes. Yeah, getting to the end of the conversation here and maybe looking ahead even a little bit further, maybe an obvious question, maybe not. But as you think about what the potential is right now, given just kind of economic situation, uncertainty, obviously the markets are kind of closed. Is the the goal to figure out how to go public here in the future when the timing's right? How do you think about continuing to take the brand and from an HQ level to the next level, whatever it may be? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, the, the public markets is not a specific goal of ours. It's really mm-hmm. what are the resources or potential partners on the road that can do things that we just can't do on our own? Like where, where, where can we lean in, you know, with a, with a potential partner? And I don't think there's anything that's near term. I do, one area I haven't mentioned is, you know, we've been on this track of how do we become a bigger part of the healthcare conversation, really preventative. And it's this whole notion of like medicine 2.0 is just completely about reacting to disease. And it's always too late, decades too late. And kind of 3.0 that's, you know, coming around is like truly preventative, which you need to be doing things decades before onset of all these different diseases that, that are just taking out the, the general public. Of course, just our workout alone does a lot. It really does. Right. And then, but there's the, there's nutrition and sleep and all the other things that have to be part of, part of it. But we, we, you know, we have a couple medical programs already with United Healthcare with Optum where they are paying for, you know, their constituents to come to Orange Theory and we're seeing really good results and longevity. We want to play a much bigger role there. So like if the headline is, it's like, how do we get Orange Theory paid for or subsidized for all? Like, how do we reduce that barrier of the cost? and have encouragement from the, the healthcare community to get people moving. That could be through a combination of things too. So that could be through our Orange Theory Live platform. Like we don't have enough studios to service 50 million people, right? But could we, could we service millions and millions of people through a digital platform? What's different about our digital platform is the coach actually sees you. So it's, it's very different than what's out there. The coach sees you and they also see your heart rate. So we recreate yeah. It's definitely not the same as being in studio, but we recreate a lot of it and a lot of that even through a, a virtual platform. So I see that down the road, there's a potential intersection and maybe some of it is in studio and some of it is through that Orange Theory Live. That's a, you know, a multi, multi-year project and we've been taking steps towards it. Even, even in the last three years, we've been moving towards it. So we may have, you know, may have something else to announce later this year, early next year, which will be another step. And you see other very big companies, right, that, are, that want to get involved in healthcare because the size of the prize is so big. And it's really the core is like, how do you help people be healthier? Because right. I, mean, I know you know about like health span versus lifespan. Like it's not really the years that you live. If your health falls off a cliff 15 years before you pass, that's a horrible outcome for people. Like how do you kind of falling off the cliff is actually the end. Like you, you actually have a high level of function and a low level of disease until the end of your life. And I think that there's got to be a culmination in a lot of people working together to really move the needle there being versus just reactive healthcare. Yeah. I think the, uh, the idea trying to figure out how to service 50 million members is a good problem to have, (laughs) whether that's online or, you know, in person. Uh, But even a step further, as you mentioned, like medicine 2.0, potentially medicine 3.0, it's starting to think about fitness in that same light as well, going from this, hey, you sign up to a place and you probably don't go to now we're engaging you. It's getting more personalized and now kind of backing into how do we get to a, a healthcare or health insurance funded fitness to be preventative? Um, yeah. yeah, super powerful and certainly something that's important to be at the forefront of when you're thinking about what it means to live put healthier years onto your life. But with that, I think we'll get you out of here. Certainly a lot to look forward to. The, the conversation, the takeaway for me is just thinking about as not only Orange Theory, but the industry is getting back to business. There's a lot of momentum, a lot of energy and a lot to look forward to. So I think also very encouraging for the listeners and anybody kind of building in the space. So thanks for uh, taking some time today to share it with us. Yeah, it was a pleasure to, to connect and, and talk shop a little bit. Thanks, Joe. I appreciate it. One more thing before you head out. Help us spread the word. Take a minute to rate and view the podcast, subscribe to the YouTube channel or share this episode with a friend. And if you like conversations like this, you'll love the Fit Insider newsletter. We send it every Tuesday. The link is in the description. Thanks again for listening. We'll see you back here next week.